What is up Broncos fans, the Denver Broncos show back here again to do another video. In this video I'll be previewing the Broncos upcoming game with the San Diego Chargers on Thursday night. Huge game for us, obviously another primetime game, back-to-back -back primetime games for the Broncos. So that's a big deal and it's always a, a big game when you're playing San Diego, a huge division rival. I obviously hate this team a lot. I'm sure a lot of Broncos fans hate this team, but definitely got all the respect in the world for them as well. They, they played really well uh, this season. They obviously were a very tough team last season. They're 5-2 and two so far. Uh, they just lost to Kansas City, so I expect them uh, to be well prepared, well coached, um, and, and hungry for a win, and, and hungry to prove something, especially against us. And, and the division leads on the line in the AFC West. So anytime you're playing a division rival with a division lead on the line, primetime game, obviously a huge game for us. And, and the Broncos really are kind of in the the heart of their schedule right now. We're, we're really on a pivotal three-game stretch right now. We just beat the Niners. Now we're playing the Chargers, and then next week we go to New England. Uh, it's to play the Patriots. So this is a, obviously a big game for us. We, we got some momentum now. We've won three games in a row. We just dominated the Niners on national uh, television. So hopefully we can use that momentum uh, here against the Chargers. And, and it's going to take our best effort. This is going to be a great challenge for us on both sides of the ball. That's some of the keys to this game uh, for the Broncos, starting on the offensive side of the ball. We have to control the time of possession here against this team if we are to beat them. They've really had success against us recently, primarily due to the fact that they've been able to run the ball, keep kind of play key Keep away with our offense and uh, stay on the field, sustain drives, and control the tempo of the game and control the clock and eat up uh, the clock so that our offense really doesn't have many opportunities to score. We can't allow them uh, to do that here in this game if we want to win on Thursday night. we got to control the tempo of the game, force them to play fast, and control the clock and sustain drives, win on third downs. Um, we, we should be able to, to have some success on third downs against this defense. This is a, a very good Chargers defense, but they're not particularly good on third down. They're, one, they're pretty mediocre, and if we can get into some third and short situations in this game um, and sustain sustained drives uh, on third down. That'll be big for our offense. The Broncos also are going to have to uh, continue to be aggressive uh, through the passing game and, and through the air. This is one of the best uh, secondaries in the NFL today. They're one of the best passing defenses in the NFL right now. Uh, ironically, they're the third-ranked passing defense and we're the third-ranked uh, passing offense currently. Um, this is just a, a great secondary. They're young, they're physical, and they're feisty. you got Jason Barrett, their, their rookie first-round pick out of TCU. they got Sharice Wright, uh, Brandon Flowers, Eric Weddle, and Marcus Gilchrist at the safety positions. I mean, they're just a, a very dynamic group of defensive backs in San Diego. They're smart, they're well coached, um, and, and we're going to have to attack this group. We're at, our receivers are going to have to be physical in coverage, get open, fight to get uh, open. I think it's kind of going to be a chippy game. And our receivers have been great this year. you got Julius Thomas and Demarius Thomas already combining for 15 touchdowns through six games, and then Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders have combined for 77 catches and 1,176 yards through these first six games. So they got to continue to be productive, uh, be effective. Peyton Manning's got to be aggressive. Adam Gase has got to be aggressive with the play calling, and we got to attack the secondary and, and, and look to kind of throw them off, confuse this group again they, they might be a young a younger group of defensive backs but they are very smart and again they're physical they're feisty they're very athletic they got two very smart safeties in, in Gil Kristen Weddle line up Julius Thomas and Demarius Thomas all over the place um, you know throw Emmanuel Sanders maybe a couple end of rounds with him kind of utilize him in that joker position um, and, and just look to confuse them like let Peyton Man be the maestro and, and try to get some big play opportunities here against what is a very stingy secondary in San Diego I think our offensive line we can have some success against this defensive line. They, they are very good at getting to the passer uh, and, and rushing the quarterback. Uh, they, they got two very good uh, young defensive ends and, and Corey Legit and Kendall Reyes. They got Melvin Ingram. They got Dwight Freeney. So we've got to protect Peyton Manning, obviously. But we got to be physical with this front seven. Our, our offensive line uh, has to continue to show improvements in the run block um, and, and kind of beat this uh, def defensive front uh, up interiorly and I think we can have some success running the ball uh, kind of right at this defense and kind of running it right up the middle um, and, and even I think uh, Hillman can have some success gain to the edge on this defense but they are a pretty fast group so I think the Broncos uh, would be better set to kind of just look to attack this team up the middle interiorly and uh, you know Ronnie Hillman has shown an improved ability uh, to run between the tackles this season he's been more physical with his running ability he's been great in the last two games having 38 carries 174 yards two touchdowns I was in 4.7 yards per carry. So hopefully Ronnie Hillman can, can continue that level of productivity, productivity up and, again, uh, run in between the tackles and kind of mash uh, this defensive line, just kind of go right at them up the middle. I think we can have some success around the ball. And if we do that, we can uh, definitely hopefully get a, a couple shots down the field uh, against this tough secondary with the passing game. So those are, things, uh, those are some of the keys, I think, for the Broncos offense here against the Chargers defense on Thursday night. Defensively, what we need to do to have some success here against the Chargers uh, on Thursday night, uh, first and foremost, 
foremost, we've got to stop the run. Again, this team kind of wants to play keep away with our offense. They want to control the tempo of the game. They want to control the clock, kind of eat up that time. Um, and that starts with them uh, being able to run the ball. So first and foremost, you got to stop the run. Uh, defensively, we've been great up front interiorly with our defensive line. It starts with Terrence Knight and Malik Jackson, Derek Wolf. Um, and Sylvester Williams, all those guys have been key in eating up space and closing up gaps uh, against uh, opposing offenses in the run game. Starts with the running back, Brandon Oliver. He's been a nice surprise for them uh, as a running back uh, rookie this season out of Buffalo. He has 316 yards. He's averaging 4.4 yards per carry. Um, and he has two rushing touchdowns so far this season. He also is a very capable uh, receiver out of the backfield. He has 14 catches for 135 yards and a touchdown this season. He's very shifty, very quick, very Darren Sproles-like, uh, but he's also a very physical runner. He's good at... Uh, uh, running in between the tackles. Um, I mean, he's a very stout guy. He's a very stout runner. He's a good burst. Uh, so, so we got to be ready for that. We got to match his physicality uh, with our defensive line and our front seven, um, and, and, and kind of take advantage of what is a, a weak interior offensive line for the Chargers. They lost uh, starting center Nick Hardwick at the beginning of the season. He's out out uh, the, uh, for the year due to injury. Um, and this is kind of a weak interior offensive line. So we got to we got to look to kind of beat them up interiorly, stop the run. Starts up front with Pot Rose, Terrence Knight, and um, Sylvester Williams getting getting that push up front and being more physical uh, than San Diego's interior offensive line. And obviously pressuring Phillip Rivers is, is going to be huge uh, for our defense here. Um, and and if, if we want any chance at limiting this Chargers offense and kind of slowing them down here in this game, we're going to have to get to Phillip Rivers and pressure him. He's obviously the guy that's had his fair share of success against the Broncos throughout his career with San Diego. Um, and he's been nothing short of amazing this year so far. He's already thrown for 1,961 yards, 17 touchdowns, only three interceptions. Um, he's completing 67% of his passes. He's just been great. Um, and, and he's done a great job of, of leading that Chargers offense. And, and really kind of making a push for the MVP this year and, and has really been a huge reason why they are 5-2 and two right now. And he's a dangerous, dangerous quarterback. You give him time, um, he'll kill you and he'll make you pay. Um, and he's a guy that you got to pressure. I think it starts with, with, again, kind of taking advantage of what I, I feel is a weak interior offensive line uh, for, for the, the, the San Diego Chargers. I think they have very solid tackles in King Dunlap and uh, DJ Fluker, but their interior offensive line, uh, I think we have a big advantage there with, with Terrence Knighton, with Sylvester Williams, uh, with Malik Jackson and Derek Wolf. I, I think if we can get those guys inside and, and look for them to kind of collapse the pocket interiorly, I think it's only going to make it easier for Von Miller and Demarcus Ware one-on-one on the outside with Dunlap um, and Fluker and, and taking advantage of those two tackles. They're both, both very two big, physical, good tackles. Um, but I think Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware uh, easily can, can have success against them. Those two guys have obviously been huge. They've, they've been dominant over the past three games. They've already combined for 15 sacks this year. Um, and I think if we can kind of collapse the pocket interiorly, it's only going to make it uh, a lot easier for Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware to, to get to Phillip Rivers. Phillip Rivers is, is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL at stepping up into the pocket. Uh, when the pocket starts to collapse, steps up in it, makes a throw. And he's also great at uh, making a throw uh, under pressure and, and, and knowing when he's going to get hit. He'll take a shot. He's a very tough competitor. So we're going to have to kind of beat him up, consistently get to him, maybe run a couple safety blitzes with T.J. Ward, cornerback blitzes with Bradley Roby, uh, Chris Harris kind of mix it up there uh, to try to get to him, disguise some blitzes from Jack Del Rio. But really, if we can collapse the pocket interiorly uh, with, with with Malik Jackson and, and, and Derek Wolf rushing uh, Phillip Rivers up the middle and Terrence Knighton, um, I I think it's going to limit his opportunities to step up into the pocket and make throws, which he's so good at. A lot of people have talked about Julius Thomas's year at the tight end position, but Antonio Gates uh, is, is not uh, too far behind him. He's already got 363 yards receiving, already has seven touchdowns himself. Uh, he's obviously a red zone threat. He's one of Phillip Rivers' uh, favorite targets, kind of his safety blanket, um, and is, is one of his favorite third down targets. So our linebackers, our safeties, TJ Ward, Raheem Moore, our secondary, they're going to have to be in, in constant communication um, and in constant rhythm and, and knowing where Gates is lined up. And uh, looking to contain him, and obviously in the red zone, maybe looking to, to double team him. We just got to look to to contain him and kind of take him away from Philip Rivers, especially on third down, and also limiting Malcolm Floyd. Uh, he's been great this season. He has 20 catches, 412 yards, and three touchdowns for San Diego's offense. He has eight catches this season of 20 yards or more. We can't let him beat us vertically and get behind our defense because if he's able to do that, um, that's going to open up some things for Antonio Gates underneath, Eddie Royal underneath, who's obviously deadly, um, and, and Malcolm Floyd again is another guy that's a big physical wide receiver. Um, who, who's a, a very, very uh, dangerous red zone target. So we're going to have to uh, watch him in the red zone. He's a big threat down there. Um, and again, not let him get behind our safeties and beat us vertically. He's That's it for me, guys. Those are just uh, some of the keys, some of the things I think the Broncos need to do in order to beat San Diego on Thursday night. Leave me a comment below whether you're a Broncos fan or a Chargers fan.
on what you think uh, both teams need to do in order to win this game. I expect, uh, again, nothing short of a, a battle um, and, and a very uh, tough game here against San Diego. They're a great test for us, and, and they, again, have played really well so far this year. They're 5-2. and two. Uh, They have very two very close losses to Arizona uh, and, and uh, Kansas City, obviously, last Sunday. And I expect them to be, be very hungry. they got a chip on the shoulder. They're the last team to... Uh, to beat us at home, so they're going to have some confidence there, and uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a big game. AFC West Division leads on the line. Should be a fun one on Thursday night. So thanks for watching, guys. Again, leave me a comment below with your preview for this game, and uh, I'll talk to you guys after the game on Thursday night. Should be a fun one. Go Broncos. Goes.